Good evening. And welcome to Mum McLoon on Maui. Yoda people, and uh, welcome to uh, another Monday night conference. Today we're up to seminar number sixteen. The date is June the thirteenth, two thousand and eleven. Let's get going. Back to this McLuhan book. Uh, it says um, it's called The Global Village, and subtitled Transformations in World Life and Media in the Twenty First Century. So it's by McLuhan and Bruce R. Powers. So on page ninety two, it says. Global robotism, the dissatisfaction. Robotism is also decentralizing. The invention of the alphabet and writing tended to complement the ancient propensity to concentrate, in a sedentary way, power and resources. The scribe had a strategic left hemisphere position in centralized bureaucracy well into the 20th century. In an electrically configured society, all the critical information necessary to manufacture and distribute from automobiles to computer would be available to everyone at the same time. Espionage becomes an art form. Culture becomes organized like an electric circuit. Each point in the net is as central as the next. Electric man loses touch with the concept of a ruling center as well as the restraints of social rules based on interconnection. Hierarchies constantly dissolve and reform. The computer, the satellite, the database, and the nascent multi-carrier telecommunications corporation will break apart what remains of the old print-orientated ethos by diminishing the number of people in the workplace, destroying what is left of personal privacy, and politically destabilizing entire nations through the wholesale transfer of uncensored information across national borders via countless microwave units and interactive satellites. The 21st century will be the age of aquarium. By common consent, left hemisphere thinking will atrophy, submerged in acoustic space. So that's the Global Village Transformations in World Life and Media in the 21st Century by Marshall McLuhan and Bruce R. Powers, 1989, page 92. What I found good about uh, Bruce Powers' book, he would fill out, add a few extra words, a few extra sentences to help explain what McLuhan would maybe just gloss over. So where it says, electric man loses touch with the concept of a ruling center as well as the restraints of social rules based on interconnection. Those are words Marshall wouldn't write. Don't you agree, Andrew? He would not write yeah. it that way. Yeah, it's uh, Bruce comes, he's very uh, managerial, I guess, and some, he shares some similarity with uh, Barrington. Yes, he translates, like Marshall might have said, electric man makes rather than matches. Uh, decentralized. He wouldn't have the statement, restraints of social rules based on interconnection, interconnection being like matching. People would read McLuhan and he'd say center margin, they'd find it opaque. They wouldn't get enough other words, social facts, uh, filled in to know what Marshall meant. And so Marshall, you take this sentence, electric man loses touch with the concept of a ruling center as well as the restraints of social rules based on interconnection. That would never be spelled out like that. Marshall would say electric man decentralizes and uh, centra centralized bureaucracies collapse. And then yeah, people go, well, the, Yeah, the additional words like censored, uncensored information, like that's also uh, a, an odd thing for McLuhan to say, that the, um, the, uh, the gloss on that um, makes, well, certain things appear more clear. Yeah, and then to say hierarchies, hierarchies constantly dissolve and reform, that's never been said by McLuhan, but it is implied in what he wrote about. Hierarchies constantly dissolve and reform. And uh, let's see, they'll break apart and what remains of the old print-oriented ethos. Marshall wouldn't write that way. He'd have the same idea, Scott, but he would have less words. It's actually, I can understand people, when they read Understand Media, found it, bland, boring. If they had no clue what he was talking about, then they wouldn't be sparked by it. And they'd find that it was made up of five words, the whole book. <laughs> you know, matching, making, visual, acoustic, and then he'd attach those labels to a bunch of long quotes. And he didn't give you the details of uh, the kind of thinking that left hemisphere people would, uh, would require. Step by step, prove your case, what was, what de decentralizes, and how. Uh, to, remember he would say that he never read serious books page to page. He never read every word of a serious book. He would skip every other page because he said serious books tend to repeat themselves. So he would like to fill in, he said, with his own noodle what uh, he would like to get from it. He yeah, would because he had enough, he had a Finnegan's Wake overview of history so his brain could fill in all the details. 
Right, and uh, yeah, he's well, he could fill in the details, and uh, sometimes that backfired for the kind of mind that did not want to uh, try to figure things out, just wanted to be given the facts, ma'am. So he was always playing with the tendency of the left hemisphere person in the book. He'd play with it, uh, with the book form itself, like Phineas Wake did.